I created my first website in the year 2005, which I titled motivationfortoday.com. It was a forum where I share my experiences and the word of God on a daily basis with people on the website. And it was a very good website. People were responding and the website was becoming popular. But suddenly there are some people they call hackers. These hackers hacked into my website and the notice I saw was that this website had been hacked. All effort to retrieve this website proved abortive. As I was about to give up, something told me to contact the web host. So I, w I contacted the web hosting um, I mean company and complained to them that, look, my website was hosted by you, and now some people had hacked into it. The website host, I mean, the, the, the hosting company tried all they could to help me to retrieve the website. I retrieved the website. I continued my job. Uh, encouraging people every day, sending motivational messages in written form, you know. But suddenly, these hackers hacked again because there was a security lapse. And when they hacked again, the company helped me to retrieve it. So after I retrieved it, I decided to sell the website because these hackers would not allow me to rest. It happens also in some films. I've watched it, and this happened in real life where there are some people, they call them hijackers. They can hijack airplane. And when they hijack the airplane, they will redirect the, airplane, the, the airplane to another location of their choice. And they will demand the ransom either from the government or from the people that are involved, from the families of the people, and they will be threatening, we will kill these people if you don't pay so, so, and so amount. When hijackers take over an airplane, they take control of that airplane. When hackers take control and they hack a website, they take control of that website. When they take control of your Facebook, they take control of your Facebook. You know? And this also is happening in real life. There are spiritual hackers who hacked into people's lives. There are some spiritual hijackers who hijack some people's family. Good morning. You are welcome to I Prevail with Joseph Adenuga. This morning, as usual, I have, bring the, I have brought the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ to you to encourage you, to inspire you, to motivate you, and to bless you. The Bible says in the book of Psalm 107, verse 20, He sent His word, and He healed them, and He delivered them from their destruction. Today, as you hear the sound of my voice, this is the word of God. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. As you hear this gospel today, God will bless you. God Almighty is going to heal you of every sickness, every disease that is plaguing your life. As you hear me, problems are flying out of your life. As you hear the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ through my mouth today, the power of God is present in your life to heal you and to deliver you in Jesus' name. Amen. Today, I want to speak on this topic which I call dealing with spiritual hijack. Sp dealing with spiritual hackers. There are spiritual hackers who hacked into people's lives. When they operate in somebody's life, they are in control. That person is no longer in control. They take control from you. They take control. There are different ways spiritual hackers, you know, operate in people's lives. Spiritual hijackers. How do they do it? They could, they could hack into your life and take control of your life and make you addicted to drinking alcohol. They could hijack your life such, in such a way that you cannot control your life in that area. When they hack into your matrimonial home, you see, they bring different kinds of strange men or strange women into that home. And the person will not be able to control it again. They are in control. When they hack into your finances, it's a problem. You need God to intervene. Any area of your life that spiritual hackers you know, get control of, you need the grace of God. Just like that, my website, I had to control the web hosting company. The company that was hosting my website, they were the ones that rescued me. You see? 
You need God. When spiritual hijackers hijack your life, when they hijack your business, when they hijack your wife or your husband, when they hijack your, your children, sometimes spiritual hackers will hack into your children and those children will begin to say they are lesbians. That that's the way God created them or they are, you know, gay. There is nothing like that. These are spiritual, you know, hijackers, hijacking into the children. We need to contact the web host. We need to contact our father. We need to contact our God. We need prayers. Hallelujah. We need the Bible says from the time of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffer violence. The violent take it by force. Hallelujah. We need to understand the principles of taking back what the spiritual hijackers have hijacked in our life. We need to understand the principle of taking it by force. Hallelujah. You need to understand when they hijack your business, when the devil hack into your business, you need to understand the principle of taking it by force. Hallelujah. You see, somebody told me, he said my website, his website was hijacked. And that this person is a pastor. They put different kinds of, you know, film, naked film, blue film into a pastor's website. This is wickedness. Hallelujah. I don't know the people who have hijacked your life. I'm not talking about social media. I'm not talking about website. I'm talking about lives. I'm just using these as examples. These are just parables. You know, I don't know. Look at your life in which area the hackers have hacked into your life. If you find yourself doing something that is controlling you, there is hackers in place in your life, spiritual hackers. They have hacked into your life. You cannot control your life. You cannot control the way you drink. You cannot control the, the you know your you know your, your yourself when you are in the presence of the opposite says there is a an hacker, spiritual hacker, controlled by the devil. You need to deal with this. Hallelujah. And that is why today I titled this message, Dealing with Spiritual Hackers. When they hack into your money, when they hack into your finances, you will try everything that you can do, but there will not be any way out because they have hacked into your finances. You need to fight. Hallelujah. You need to fight. The Bible says we are fighting, but not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against spiritual wickedness. Hallelujah. Against spiritual wickedness in the high places. We are fighting. Hallelujah. Don't deceive yourself. The devil is the one that is controlling this world. And they used to hijack people's lives. They hijack finances. They hijack people's health. But let me tell you, we are built to win. Because the Bible says we are more than conquerors through Christ that loved us. Hallelujah. He said, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They may hijack your life. There is no doubt about it. But you can reclaim your life when you can fight. And I'm not talking about physical fighting. I'm talking about spiritual warfare. The Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 10 from verse 4, he said, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and Every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. You've got power. You've got the weapon to retrieve whatever area of your life the devil have hijacked. If they hijack your finances, you need to fight and get it back. If they hijack your family, you need to fight and get it back. If they hijack your health, you need to rise and fight. Hallelujah. The Bible says the battle is mine, says the Lord. And God says, I'm going to revenge for you. The Bible says, whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. You need to rise and do something. If they hijack your finances, they hijack your family, they hijack your health, whatever they hijack, you can fight back and get it back because God promised. He said, I will restore to you the years that the canker worm have eaten away. I will restore to you the years that the palmer worm, the caterpillar have eaten. I'm going to restore but you need to fight. 
Hallelujah. So this morning, I'm calling you to begin to fight, to get back what the hackers have hacked out of your life. You need to get back what the hijackers have hijacked out of your life. It is time to fight. Yesterday, I started telling you the operations of spiritual hackers in the life of people. And I started by giving an example of how my website was hacked. In actual fact, in the real life, when hackers hacked into a website or social media, they, they've got code with which to enter into your account or your website. They change the password. You can no longer enter into your account. They behave as the owner. They can post any message to your website or social media. And people will think you are the one posting those messages. And hackers can also hack into people's account. They can withdraw money from your account. The bankers will not know that they were hackers because they will think you are the one that is trying to withdraw the money from your own account. And so hackers operate in so many ways. And yesterday I was trying to tell you that we are in a day when spiritual hackers is hacking into so many people's lives and people are behaving the way they like. What are the signs of spiritual hackers in the life of a man? These are the things I want to speak about today. Good morning. You are welcome to I Prevail with Joseph Adenoga. This is the daily broadcast that God orchestrated to come to you through me in order to encourage you to give you power to prevail. It's all about you prevailing in life, spiritual, mental, and physical. And I believe today God will speak to you and bless you. God will lift you up from where you are to where you want to be and where you are destined to be because I believe you are destined to be great. And that is one of the reasons why God arranged for you to be listening to the sound of my voice every day. May God lift you up and make you somebody who will be great in life in Jesus' name. It is well with your soul. Amen. Now today I just want you to understand what happens, the signs that the devil has hacked into your life. Number one, when the devil hacks into a man or a woman's life, it brings confusion. It steals your joy. Your peace disappears. You are no longer in control. You see, bad things begin to happen. Sometimes you have a habit that you cannot leave. When a habit has mastered you and you try to leave that habit and you cannot, the enemy the devil has hacked into your life. And now that behavior you behave, it looks like you, but that is not you. When you smoke, you cannot leave it. The devil has given you another character. You see, these are the signs that makes you to know that the devil has hacked into your life. When you can talk to anybody anyhow, when you, when you look down on other creatures of God as if they were not created by God, these are signs that the devil has hacked into your life. When the devil hacks into somebody's life, he gives that person another character. Let me tell you about you. When you were created, and not only you, every human being that was born to the face of this earth is created with blessing. Every man is created to succeed. God created us with intention to bless us in fivefold, which includes to be fruitful in everything we do, to multiply, to replenish the earth, to subdue problems, and to have dominion. That is God's five-point agenda for sending you to this world so that you can have dominion over your world. But you see, as soon as the devil hacked into a man's life, that man can no longer have dominion. When you see yourself dominated by situations and circumstances, it is likely the devil has hacked into your life. You need to regain your life back by force. That is why our Lord Jesus Christ says, 
from the time of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffer violent. The violent must take it by force. Why? Because the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus Christ has come that we might have life and that we might have it abundantly. And so because the devil came to hack into our lives, when you find out these things that I'm talking about in your life, it means that the devil has hacked into your life and you need to act fast. Because if you don't ask, act fast, what the devil's intention is, is to quickly kill you before your time so that you will not be able to enjoy the privilege and the blessing for which you are sent here to enjoy. And that's why now is the time to act. Now is the time to fight. The Bible says we are fighting, but not against flesh and blood. It's against principalities. It's against powers. It's against the rulers of darkness of this world. We are fighting against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. And that is why you need to act fast. If you know your life has been hacked, some people, when the devil hack into their body, the doctors, you know, feel that it's a sickness that is incurable. What is incurable? Nothing is incurable but that disease that the devil has hacked into people's body. When the devil hack into your body and bring a disease into that body, the doctor will not find a solution. Why? Because that body is hacked by the devil through that disease. But all things are possible. If you can believe in the word of God, you can rise and shine. If you can believe in the word of God, you can overcome the devil. If you can believe the word of God, you can defeat the enemy. If you can believe the word of God, you can make the devil to bow down. Hallelujah. You can make the devil to surrender. Hallelujah. You can reclaim what the devil has stolen from you. And that's why our, uh, the, the Bible says in the book of Joel, chapter 2 from verse 25, it said, I'm going to restore to you the years that the canker worm, the, cap, the palmer worm, and the caterpillar have eaten. God says, I'm going to restore back to you. But you have to do something. If you do nothing, nothing is going to work. That's why the Bible says, quoting our Lord Jesus, he said, whatsoever you bind or not shall be bound in heaven. Meaning that the angel, the Bible says, the angels of the Lord encamp round about them that fear him and deliver them. But they will deliver you when you bind. If you don't bind, the angels will not bind. Many of us, we have angels that are redundant. We are not engaging them by binding forces of wickedness. And so this is the message for you today. The devil has hacked into your life. There's no problem about that. It's not a new thing. It's not a big thing. All you need to do this morning is to rise and reclaim your life from the devil. This is the message today. Thank you for listening. I'd like you to rebroadcast this. Get somebody blessed. Somebody is going to be blessed if you send this to them and they will thank you for it. And if you are getting this for the first time, just save my number if you have WhatsApp. I do send this every day on WhatsApp. There is no day I don't send this. Just save my number. My number is plus 27740302381. Save that number right now. Go to your WhatsApp. Just WhatsApp me and say, add me. And I will add you and begin to send this to you from tomorrow. And I'd like you to be a partner with us. If you are blessed by this word, this word is blessing you. I'd like you to do something in this ministry. Just partner with me. I want to send this word to more people. I want to increase the scope uh, of the spread of this word. And whatever you use to partner with me is going to help. Thank you so much. God bless you. It is well with your soul. This is Joseph Adenuga, the pastor of Prevailing Church of Christ, Bethlehem, Free State, South Africa, signing out and saying to you, be blessed and remain blessed.